Hi students, so welcome back to another uh, session of uh, super quick revisions. We in standard costing have done quite a lot. Our concept wise, this is going to be the last lecture. Okay, and then we are going to be going on with the sums, whatever you all have done in each and every question. Okay, so in this last lecture, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be combining few of the things that we all have done in the previous lectures. That is the relationship between the variances. Okay, in that we all have done four notes. First note is slightly different. I'll uh, read that particular thing. Then I'll come back to the agenda for today. Okay, so first of all, selling price variance is the only variance that comes under sales variances as well as profit variances. So if I do go back, you get selling price variance under profit variances. You get selling price variance under profit variances, whether it's absorption or margin, it is same only. There is no difference as such. Okay. But even under sales variances, you do have selling price variance. So everywhere we all had written note one over there. So therefore selling price variance is the only variance that comes under sales variances as well as under profit variances. And it is calculated as what should have been the selling price. That is your standard selling price minus actual selling price into actual quantity sold. That's it into actual quantity sold. Now. Once that particular thing is done, now we are proceeding for today's agenda and that is we say that variances are related to each other when the bracket is common. So in all the variances, wherever the brackets are common, we have tried to list them down. Okay. And then we have three types of relationships that are there. This is your first type of variances, which is there. Okay. First type in this particular case, I call that thing as our note two. If the company has only one single product, if the company deals in only one single product, then your sales volume and profit volume will be related to each other. Even if there is more than one product, we will be able to connect product wise and not overall. Okay. So therefore, which variances are related to each other? That is sales volume and profit volume. How are they connected? Because the brackets are same. Okay. Under absorption costing, profit volume variance is calculated as it is calculated as in this case what should have been the quantity that you should have sold minus actual quantity that you sold and outside you multiply by standard profit per unit outside you multiply by standard profit per unit if it is sales volume bracket still remains same only okay so therefore outside the only thing that changes we now multiply by standard selling price now, if the variances, are, if the brackets are same, how are the variances connected to each other? It's simple. Brackets remaining same, brackets remaining same. Whatever is the proportion over here will also be the proportion over here. That's how these things get connected. Now, example, how we have used them in the questions in future. We all have used them in this particular manner. Example, we have to find out profit volume variance. We have been given sales volume variance as 1000 adverse of a certain product. And we have been told compute profit volume variance. Okay. We don't know what is profit volume variance. We have to be computing it. But then to compute profit volume variance actually requires three things. This figure, this figure and this particular figure. But then in question, suppose nothing is given. But then one other line is there. And that particular line is standard profit per unit is 50% of standard selling price. If this line is given, I'll repeat this line, standard profit per unit is 50% of standard selling price. If this line is given, how do I use this entire correction? I simply try to be saying, if this figure is 50% of this figure, brackets remaining same, this variance will be 50% of this particular variance. So therefore, if sales volume is 1000 adverse, profit volume will become 500 adverse. That's it. Okay. Then in that case, you all have marginal costing. In marginal costing also, instead of profit volume variance, you'll start to have contribution volume variance and how it will get calculated. It's the same brackets boss. Okay. But outside you multiply by standard contribution per unit here outside you multiply by standard selling price. So therefore, even under marginal costing, the brackets are same. No. So therefore, variances are connected to each other exactly in the same way. Okay. So do remember that. Do remember that if, 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 if. There is one single product sales volume and profit volume are connected to each other. Even if there is more than one type of product, do remember sales volume and uh, profit volume will be connected to each other product wise and not overall. Okay. Then 
मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट्स इफ देर इज मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट्स देन सेल्स वॉल्यूम एंड प्रॉफिट वॉल्यूम विल नॉट बी कनेक्टेड टू इच अदर बिकॉज देर इज मोर देन वन प्रोडक्ट देन आर देर एनी बराइंसिस दैट विल स्टिल बी कनेक्टेड टू इच अदर येस दो आर नथिंग बट प्रॉफिट क्वान्टिटी एंड सेल्स क्वान्टिटी we call that thing as note 3 so in your previous charts if you try to be seeing note 3 is printed in all the quantity variances that is in sales quantity as well as in profit quantity in absorption costing how is profit quantity variance computed how is that particular thing computed standard quantity to be sold minus actual quantity sold into standard weighted average net profit per unit now in quantity variances we don't deal product wise we deal overall okay so therefore If suppose there are two products, how much total quantity of A and B suppose those are my two products should have been sold? How much was the total quantity that was sold? And then we multiply by standard weighted average profit per unit. Over here in this particular case, <coughs> sales quantity everything is same. The brackets are same, but outside you multiply by standard weighted average selling price. So exactly the same thing. Are the brackets same? Yes, the brackets are same. So therefore, the ratio of the figures outside the bracket. Will also be the ratio between the variances. We all have used that, in fact, in one of the questions also of that uh, salesman. If you all do remember, then you all have marginal costing. Now, marginal costing in this particular case is like this. Marginal costing, uh, instead of standard profit per unit, what you try to be arriving is standard weighted average. Instead of uh, weighted average, sorry, sorry, sorry. Instead of standard weighted average profit per unit. Now, in case of your marginal costing, you will start to be having. standard weighted average contribution per unit rest everything remains same only okay so therefore contribution quantity variance and sales quantity variance is brackets are still same only boss only thing that change are the figures that go outside the bracket so therefore here you have standard weighted average contribution per unit here you have standard weighted average selling price that's it okay now that's what we are going to be saying over here now So then, do remember that if there is more than one product, two variances are still connected. Okay, which are these two variances? These are sales quantity and profit quantity. If it is a marginal costing, then it will become say uh, sales quantity and contribution quantity. Okay. Now, last note over here. Last note, I call that particular thing as note four, and this note four comes from where? This note four comes from where? Okay, that comes from mainly all your efficiency variances. In labor, you have your last variance, sub efficiency variance, popularly called as yield variance. In variable overheads, our last variance is variable overheads. Uh, efficiency variance. In fixed overheads, we have our last particular variance, and that is nothing but fixed overheads efficiency variance. Now, all these variances are calculated as. Workers should have taken how many hours for actual output and how many hours they actually took for the actual output. That's it. Outside figure keeps on changing. If it is labor yield variance, we'll multiply by standard weighted average wage rate. If it is say variable overheads, we'll multiply by standard variable overheads per hour. If it is fixed overheads, we'll multiply by absorption rate per hour. But everywhere the bracket still remains same. If the variances, sorry, if the brackets are same, variances are connected to each other. Okay, this also we all have tried to be using in one or two questions as such. Okay, that's it about the connection. One last thing that I had done and that was interpretation of sales mix variance and profit mix variance. Now this had come handy in one of the questions that we all had done. Now. If ever profit mix variance is favorable, and sales mix variance is also favorable. Do remember, mix variance comes whenever there is more than one product. Okay, mix variance comes, profit mix and sales mix comes whenever there is more than one single product. Okay, if both of them are favorable, it will mean that company is changing the ratio in favor of those products which have higher selling price. and the products which have higher selling price must be having higher profit so therefore this change of ratio leads to higher sales as well as higher profit second this was for second profit mix variance is adverse but sales mix variance is also adverse what does it mean company is changing the ratio in favor of those products which have lower selling price and the products which have lower selling price also have lower profits easy i mainly concerned about 3 and 4 profit mix variance is favorable sales mix variance is adverse now if ever in any question you encounter this situation so sales mix variance is adverse but profit mix variance is favorable you will observe that company is changing the ratio in four in those particular uh, in the favor of those particular products which have lower selling price but the products which have lower selling price must be leading to higher profit 
that is why when company sells more of those particular products which have lower selling price it sales falls but then the same products which have lower selling price actually have higher profit so therefore company's profit will rise so therefore if ever profit mix variance is favorable sales mix variance is adverse it means that company is changing the ratio in uh, favor of those particular products which have lower selling price but the products of the company which have lower selling price must actually be having higher profit last thing that is profit mix variance. Profit mix variance, if it is adverse, sales mix variance is favorable. Now, what does this particular thing mean? It means that company is changing the ratio in favor of those particular products which have higher selling price. But those products which have higher selling price must be actually having lower profit per unit. That is why companies sales rises, but then what falls over here? Profits. Now, these are all the things that you should be knowing. Okay. Now, towards the end of this, just that I want you all to recall what reconciliation statement we were always making. Okay. Reconciliation of budgeted and actual profit under absorption costing. Under marginal costing is no way different. Okay. Except for fixed overheads. We are not going to be having all the breakups because there is only one variance. Apart from that, profit variances start to become contribution variances. That could be the only change as such. Okay. But if you are asked reconciliation statement, if you are asked to comment, it's always better to be making a reconciliation statement. If you are ever asked why did the profit of uh, one year does not tally with the profit of the second year, you can always try to be making a reconciliation. Now, we are trying to reconcile budgeted profit and actual profit. So, therefore, we start away with budgeted profit, the profit that we had thought on the first day we will be earning. That is, budgeted quantity to be sold into, in this case, standard profit per unit. I thought how many units will be into the profit that I thought on uh, each and every unit that I will be getting. We end up with this particular statement with all the actual profit and in middle, we try to be putting all the variances that were the last variances under each head. That is, if any variance was broken up, then we don't write down that variance. We write down the breakup of that particular variance. Example, our first variance is total net profit variance. We do not record that. Then it's divided up into two parts. Net profit variance due to change in sales. Net profit variance due to change in cost. But then we don't record them because we are going to be doing their breakup. Selling price variance, profit volume variance. I've written profit volume here, but if there's a breakup of profit volume into profit mix and profit quantity, then instead of recording profit volume, you're going to be recording those variances. Then instead of profit quantity, if you have market size and market share, you're going to be recording those. In nutshell, try to be recording all the breakups as such. You have material price, like net profit variance due to chain in cost will be broken up into many heads. Material, labor, variable over its fixed overheads. There could be admin and SND also. Okay. In material, you have price and usage. If there is a breakup of usage into mix and yield, please record that. Labor, you have rate, idle time and efficiency. If there is a breakup of efficiency, that's possible. You try to be doing that. For variable overheads, if the breakup is possible into expenditure and efficiency, please do that. Uh, for fixed overheads, you have expenditure and volume. If day's data is not given, you will be having three things over here. Capacity utilization, then idle time and efficiency. Uh, if there is day's data, then instead of capacity, you are going to be having calendar and capacity, which will be net capacity. Okay. Accordingly, in this particular case, you will start to be having your actual profits. Okay. Now further. Now, this is ICA created stuff that I told in the class also. Okay. What is created by the institute, which is so special? If you are ever asked to reconcile standard profit with actual profit, if you are asked to reconcile standard profit and actual profit, I told this thing in the class also, usually budgeted profit and standard profit means the same thing only, okay, they are not different, they are the same thing, that is, how much profit you had thought on the first day company should be earning, but if in any question you are asked two questions, in first question you are asked, please reconcile budgeted and actual profit. In the second question you are asked, please reconcile standard profit and actual profit, then you got to be having different answers for them. So therefore, only in such questions, what ICA says that standard profit will mean how much actual quantity you have sold into standard profit. So therefore, as per them, standard profit then would be defined as actual quantity sold into standard profit per unit. Everything will be coming same except one variance that will not be coming in middle. That is nothing but profit volume variance. Why profit volume variance will not be coming? You need try to be thinking. Standard profit, we started with actual quantity sold. In actual profit, in any case, you have actual quantity sold. So therefore, we are not talking of the quantity differences only. Hence, those particular things will no longer be coming. Okay, that's it. 
same way this is under absorption costing you can be making the same statements under your marginal costing also okay that's it now these super quick revisions are aimed at you trying to do the revision fast and you are not forgetting so if you want to be making use of these particular videos i would recommend that every week try to watch all the videos so therefore every question is there with you in your mind whatever we all had done plus all the concepts also i'm trying to be saying over here along with that all the notes also do come on the telegram channel take care guys thank you i'll see you all next time bye